Alright guys, West Coast Arachnids. Just doing a little update on the mealworm farm. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, rehouse them. The mealworms, uh, I've separated the mealworms from the beetles and taken out all their dried up food. That's their leavings. It's all dried up. Um, there may be a, you know, some eggs on those, but I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, in here is the leftover babies. Uh, there's quite a few. You can't see them. Uh, I would have to have a very high macroed video camera in order for you to see them crawling around on the top of that. Um, you know, it's, it was never very deep to start with, but I probably had oh, another half inch or so of this uh, it's just wheat bran. Uh, I'll show you what it is. It's just from a superstore, natural wheat bran. Um, the blue menu stuff I use. Not sure, you know, if that's organic or not. But you know, I don't. I don't have any problems with uh, my spiders dying or anything like that, or the mealworms dying from pesticides, so that's awesome. Uh, but when you're feeding these guys, you, you're you definitely going to want to try to find organic uh, veggies and stuff for them. Um, least amount of pesticides you can, and wash them for a good half an hour to an hour. Rinse them out. Let them soak in a bowl of water. Let them rinse out, and then uh, give them a rinse and a sifter and soak them again you know soak them a couple of times uh, just to make sure that you're getting all the pesticides and you know fungicides off of off your critters you don't want them getting on them because they will die in there there's I'm not even sure how many's in there you know some of them were trying to breed though so I just interrupted them uh, Get the one here, see we anyway. You guys can pause it and see if you can give them a count. There they are. I'd say there's probably about 20 in there. I started with 30 mealworms, and so if there's 20 in there, that's great. These are going to go back into here after. Uh, right now, uh, these guys in here, the baby mealworms, are going to get upgraded. So we're going to move them out of the way. And this is what they're going in. Now again, I don't have a lot of... There's just maybe half an inch of, of wheat bran in there. And I'm simply just going to pour them in. And that's that. You know, now there's probably almost double the wheat bran in there. Uh, and what you're going to want to do is... Literally, uh, you're going to want to rinse this out and dry it. Um, yeah, it does. You can see a little bit of mold on the bottom, so I'm going to quickly do that. And I'm going to leave you here to watch uh, watch these little guys for a second. Be right back. And the container I started them in, I mean, it was just simply recycling an old uh, container I bought sliced apples in at the, the store to eat. Proper that we get our nutrition as well, not just our critters. Healthy bodies, a healthy mind, they say. Well, some people would call me nuts with all the spiders and stuff I have in my house. Okay, 
Now it's thoroughly dried out. Good and clean. Nice and shiny. And we're going to rehouse these beetles now. That's what I have left in here. Just simply pour it in. That's probably overkill. Something like this, yeah. You fill it up about halfway. The rest is just going to go into this other big container here with the baby mealworms. I get the noise. And this bag is going into recycling. Always remember to recycle your things, guys. Especially plastic products. <laughs> Even things like computer towers and electronics can be recycled. Your batteries inside, everything. And just a note on those tripods I bought from the dollar store. They're already starting to fall apart. So I'm going to go down and buy myself a decent quality one when I get a camera. Anyway, okay, so there's probably the same amount in there as there was before. And then, simple. Just dump your beetles right on top. And let them find their way around. They can't get out. They don't fly. I, well, I've never seen them fly. Um, ever. So, I mean, I, they do have wings underneath their, their hard shell there. But I've never seen them fly in all the years I've bred mealworms. And I've been doing that for well over 30 years. Alright, I'm just grabbing something. It's handy to have a fridge in your room. I'm going to give them a little bit of food. I mean, you can use this as a, a guide as well. I mean, if you haven't seen my other videos, basically, uh, these have been rinsed and washed. They're just the uh, baby skinned carrots, and I've, I soak these pretty good. So I'm going to put three of them in there. That's good enough for them right now. I mean, if you want to get go even better with that, um, give them a, a cut. So we're going to... We're going to cut these in half. Love this knife. It's awesome. Got it at a... On Canada Day downtown, they had a bunch of booths and stuff, and there was a... a knife and scissors and all kinds of things. It's a little booth they had there. These were... Ten bucks? had it for three or four years now. Never misses a stroke. Stays sharp. Always clean your utensils as well. You don't want to transfer mites or anything else when you're passing along the food. Remember, anything that you touch, whether it be your tongs, your brush, anything, that, that touches your tarantulas or reptiles or anything else, if you're touching them to your your food product or to their food product area, um, you're going to transfer mites back and forth. So if your spider has mites, you're going to transfer it to your food, which is going to transfer it back and so forth. So to avoid that, always clean your stuff in between. Uh, never go into a cage and then go directly into another cage with your brush or anything else. Always clean it. Um, best way to clean them, heat. If you can't put them in like an oven to heat them like tongs, you could easily uh, throw those into a pot of boiling water, no problem. I mean, most of the stuff you can. Um, but really, I mean, carefully look for mites. This is why I have little, I've got about four or five of these magnifying glasses and I carefully look around to see if I can see mites and if I see any I'll um, basically put that 
uh, enclosure into its own little area, barricade it off so that, you know, these mites aren't going to get out and get all over the place. Um, put the animal or critters um, into an ICU. I mean, if, there, if I see mites in here, this is gone. I'll literally take this and out it will go outside, period. You don't mess around with that kind of stuff. I mean, the mites can hide all throughout that. They're, you ain't going to get them out of there unless you use some kind of pesticides, which you don't want to do. So, very important to keep, keep your utensils as far away from your food. Uh, as far as the uh, critters, like crickets or mealworms or roaches or anything like that, do not use the same utensils you use in your tarantula cages. Um, some people will let that go and their tarantulas will get mites and then they'll transfer it into the food. I mean, I'd rather try to get it out of a tarantula cage than I would to try and get it out of... Uh, say a cricket enclosure or a cricket breeding farm or a mealworm farm or dubia roach farm you know you're gonna end up with mites all over everything and you're never gonna get rid of them because you're constantly gonna be feeding your tarantulas or lizards or whatever you're feeding and that's it you're just gonna constantly give them back for the tarantula or whatever you have you can just take that animal out clean its enclosure completely, put all new substrate in, um, look over your tarantula very carefully, use a fine brush and brush off the mites and get rid of them. Um, you can even keep the, the tea into, you know, ICU um, out of dirt and keep it away from things and, you know, give it a bowl of water and feed it. It'll be fine in there until you get rid of the mite problem. There's all kinds of videos on how to get rid of mites and everything all over YouTube, so uh, I'm not going to get into that anymore right now. But that right there is simply that. I mean, that is your basic mealworm farm right there. You know, you can use bits of apple. Um, I've even thrown in, thrown in um, crickets that have died recently. Um, anything like that. They'll eat anything. Um, apples. Uh, I do use potatoes now and again. I'd rather use boiled potatoes. So if you got leftover uh, baked potato or boiled potato, I would use that rather than uh, a raw one. Uh, simply because the raw ones tend to mold really quickly. And we have a little intruder that went right in there. Some sort of little beetle. I don't know what that is. That little fella. Ooh, you fly too. Sorry. Right now you're going to go in there. I do not want to shoot in here with my, my critters. Sorry. So I'll keep them in that container for now. Anyway, um, another point to make is I, I have tons of lids here to go on these. Uh, do not cover them up. It just tends to bring on the mold uh, really quickly. Now, when I first did my first video, <coughs> I put them in here. Sorry, my knife was underneath there. getting things out. Sorry about the camera. And I use this lid. Now this is the lid that came with it. Um, and I poked some holes in it and I thought that would be enough. Um, I even tried uh, had another lid like this. Um, I got rid of the container though. And I poked more holes in and that didn't work either. Um, I'm imagining if you cut this out, you could probably put a screen if you're worried about them getting out, but I'll tell you, I've had more crickets get out than I've ever, well, even one cricket getting out is more than I've ever had mealworms get out. Now, they're going to go back up. That's where I keep them. 
I don't have anywhere to keep these for now, so they're just going to go on top of the Cricut enclosure. And that's the Cricuts down there. Every one of those rolls is completely filled with Cricuts. It's just insane. And that's their... I've taken out the dirt that they lay eggs in. So that's where those are. And again, they're not covered. Uh, I tried covering them these, with these lids and instantly mold starts forming on the top. So I wanted to keep in the humidity and the temperature um, because you do need a high temperature for crickets to hatch out or they won't hatch. They'll just sit there and die. Um, but what I've had is uh, when I'm done, I, I take these lights. I'll do that right now. And make sure they're secure. And I literally put them on here. And I keep them on there. And that keeps it warm enough. But anyway, um, that's it. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. And bye for now.